Okay, so imagine we have a tank like this with a layer of oil floating on top of a layer of water. We want to find out what is the pressure at the bottom of the tank if it's open to the atmosphere. So first of all, let's say that we have here, this is the level surface touching the atmosphere, and we're going to say that this is P0 equals PATM. All right, first of all, let's put on some, uh, some distances here. Let's say that the oil, or the water, let's say that the water is... 2.5 meters deep and then somehow we have let's say one and a half meters of oil floating on top it's a lot of oil okay um, we're gonna need to know what the densities are so let's say that this is all at 20 degrees Celsius and, and let's so that would mean that our our water has a density um, water has a density of 998 kilograms per cubic meter all right at 20 degrees celsius you can find that in a table in a fluids or a thermodynamics textbook let's say our oil has a specific gravity has a specific gravity of 0 0.8 well that just means that it's going to be zero like 80 percent as dense as as the water that we're referencing so all we have to do is take our density of our oil is equal to 0 0.8 times density of our water. So that means 0 0.8 times 998, that's going to give us a value of 798.4 kilograms per cubic meter. All right, so now we have all of the information we need to solve what is the pressure down here. So you can even say pressure equals question mark. So maybe let's call this level here actually, let's call this level 1, so this will be P1, you know, at this boundary, uh, and this we'll call this, you know, level 2 at the bottom, so this is also going to be equal to P2, you know, at the very bottom of the tank. And we already said this is P0. So first of all, so we want to first want to calculate for P1, we have to do this kind of one fluid at a time because they have different densities. So first of all calculate pressure at P1, so we have P1 is equal to P0 plus rho g h. Okay, so P0, I guess we'll maybe have to say what the atmospheric pressure is. Let's say that in this case, the atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals. This could change if you know, you're at the top of a mountain or something or below the ocean sea level, but we're just going to say this is 101 kilopascals. So we have 101,000 pascals plus we have uh, the first layer is oil so we have our density is 798.4 kilogram per cubic meter times 9.81 meters per second squared times h that's going to be this from the surface down to 1 that's the difference in you know in height it's going to be 1.5 meters and again, if you multiply all these together, you're going to get units of pascals. So we get <clears throat> 101,000 pascals plus, when you multiply all of these together, we will get about 11,748 pascals. And then when we add these together, we just get 112,748 pascals. All right, so now we know that this is P one. So what we can do now is we can use P1 to calculate the difference in pressure from P1 to P2. So maybe let's change colors here. Uh, so we'll have P2 is going to equal now P1 plus rho g h. And you'll see this this formula is just the difference, you know, difference in in, in uh, depths of a fluid. So we conveniently usually use it for the surface, but if there's two different uh, fluids, then we have to you know use the different boundaries. Uh, because obviously the densities change. So anyways, we have P1. This is going to be 112,748 pascals, plus now we're using the density of water. So we're just going to drop the units to save some time. We'll have 998 kilogram per meters cubed times 9.81 meters per second squared times H is going to be from the difference from here to here, which will be 2.5 meters times 2.5 meters. And again, this will all turn out to be pascals. 
So we get 112, 7, 4, 8, plus this term becomes 24,000, uh, whoops, 476. This is all Pascals. And when we add these together, we're going to find that P2 is going to equal about 137. 1,224 pascals. Or probably more conveniently we can say that P2 is going to equal about 137 kilopascals. So that's all you do. If you have, you could have more fluids than this. You could have, you know, three or four fluids stacked on top of each other and as long as they're not all mixed up together, if they can separate out into these nice layers, uh, then you just do it one layer at a time and just keep making sure that you use the right height of that fluid column and also the right density.